So what are OBAs or optical brighteners and do we actually need them when we're thinking about printing? Hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today what I'm going to be looking at is optical brightening agents or OBAs for short. Now these are chemicals that are added to the paper base or the emulsion on the papers to give an appearance of a higher white point. So they look really bright white. And that is where the name on some of our papers comes from. So like the NST bright white. So those papers have OBAs in and they basically artificially give an appearance of a higher white point to the paper. But before we dive into all that, please don't forget to subscribe. So stick around to the end of the video because I will have a 15% voucher that you can use on photospeed.com to buy all the lovely papers I'm going to be talking about today. Okay, so let me answer the first question. That is, what is an OBA or an optical brightening agent? Now, basically, optical brighteners are a chemical that are added to either the emulsion of the paper or the actual physical base of the paper, like the cotton or the alpha cellulose. And what it does is it gives the appearance of a higher white point. Now it does this by taking the light that is coming into the paper and being absorbed by the paper and reflecting it back out at basically a higher UV level. So it's going to give a bluer appearance when it's coming back. So the UV level is coming in and then it's being almost amplified and added a little bit of blue and being projected back out and reflected off the paper at a higher UV level. So this is giving a bluer appearance and therefore the paper appears to be whiter. So why do we need this? Now over the last few years and decades even, we have been conditioned and told that the brighter the white the better to be honest. So this is also in cleaning products, so washing powders for example, that um, the whiter the, the products can clean your washing the better and things like that. They have to also achieve that by putting OBAs in the um, washing powder. But let's get back to paper. So the higher the white point in theory, what is going to happen is your blacks are going to be deeper, your uh, contrast is going to be a lot more punchy, also colours are going to pop a little bit more off the page. So all fantastic things and can really add to your finished print. So they look absolutely fantastic. Also another big plus for OBAs is the higher the white point, the closer your print is going to look to your screen because screens generally have a slightly higher white point than like kind of natural papers because paper has a natural white point. Now this appears to us because we've been conditioned over the years to have a slightly warmer and creamier look to it. Now OBAs give this a true, a pure white should we say. Now different papers have different OBA contents in, they don't all have absolutely maximum OBA content in, some of them have what's called moderate OBAs and slight OBAs and things. Now most papers have a small OBA content in, however there are papers on the market that I will talk about a little bit later on that have no OBAs in. Now brighter papers as well, generally depending on the brand, have don't have OBAs because the bromate sulfate intensifies that and kind of has that effect as well for us. So some, some brighter papers, those bright white ones, do have OBA content in. However, like our Platinum Brighter, that doesn't have any OBA content in. And I'll illustrate that in a second as well. So we've talked a little bit about the plus sides of OBAs, the bright colors, the vibrancy, the punchy contrast, those deep blacks, etc. Now the deep blacks arguably could be said to be being achieved by the white point being higher, so it sets the black off a little bit better, so it appears black, so it could be a little bit of an optical illusion there. However, it will help intensify those blacks a little bit as well. Now, we need to talk about the downsides of OBAs because there is a few. Now, the biggest downside and the biggest thing that if you Google OBAs, you will kind of come across online is the archivability of OBA papers. 
So that bright white point is achieved by putting that chemical agent into the paper to reflect that UV back at you at a higher kind of blue point. So what can happen with this and what does happen over decades is that chemical agent basically evaporates and is released into the atmosphere. So what can happen is, as this process is happening, this natural process, we can't stop it. So what happens is the paper basically turns back to this natural white, which, if you've been used to that high white point, will appear quite creamy and yellow and warm look to it. Also, we should say that viewing conditions can dramatically affect how papers with OBAs in appear. So on a bright sunny day, the paper will appear white and punchy, the colours will jump off the page, but a bit of a cloudy rainy day like it is today, the colours might appear a little bit duller because there isn't enough UV coming down from the sky and the sun to actually activate the OBAs in the paper. So that can change viewing conditions as well. And also if your viewing conditions are under kind of household lights or tungsten or fluorescent tubes and things, that will have a massive impact. Depending on how much UV is coming out of those bulbs and those tubes, then that will have a massive impact on how the picture looks and how it can change in different lighting condition. Now, this could be said to be uh, I mean, lighting conditions are going to affect a print if it has OBAs or not. Please have a check out of my lighting conditions video I made a few weeks ago for kind of more information on what, how different lighting conditions can affect a print. Now, we always recommend you view your print under consistent lighting with a nice view, daylight viewing bulb and things like that. So these OBAs will be active and it will give you kind of the best look for the print. But it's something to bear in mind if you're selling prints and sending prints out, that those lighting conditions could change so people could see the print in different lighting conditions. Now also, when you're framing work, the you have to think about what glass you use. Now, the standard kind of glass that we're all recommended to use is museum glass because it protects from UV rays and things like that. But what happens is with that, with that UV glass is it actually filters out the UV rays. So they're not hitting the paper and they're not getting activated by the OBAs and not being reflected back as in a kind of a strong kind of blue tone. So the paper will appear behind this glass a little bit kind of warmer and a little bit creamier. So there's another thing to think about there. Now, I think the big thing is the archivability. Now, this happens over years though. It's not going to happen overnight. It will take decades, to be honest, um, to happen, but it will happen. You can slow this process down. We can't stop it, but storing your um, prints in like acid-free sleeves and in a dark box and things like this in portfolio boxes and things like that will slow it down because it stops the UV hitting the um, OBAs and actually wearing them out in inner sense. So we do need to kind of think about how we store our prints as well. Now also UV glass, I talked about how it stops OBAs kind of activating, but it does protect our prints as well. So it will protect the colors and things. So that will prolong the life, but the glass will give the picture a little bit of a warmer look. So we talked a little bit about kind of what they are, the pros and cons. Let's actually have a look at some papers. I've got a platinum brighter and a platinum matte here. And you can probably see actually on camera the different white points. I mean, the platinum matte has OBAs in, so it is gonna be a higher white point. And the platinum brighter here doesn't. So it is a little bit warmer. I should put a picture up on screen. So this paper you can naturally see is warmer anyway. But I'm going to put on a UV light now, and I'm going to do some close-ups as well. But you will see the difference in the papers. The Platinum Brighter will be a lot darker. It'll still be blue, but it will be a lot darker shade of blue compared with the Platinum Matte here, which will be a, quite a bright blue because it's reflecting more of those blue rays back at us and amplifying those blue rays to create this whiter point of paper. Okay, so let me switch on my UV light 
and we'll have a look at these papers. Now, I am here, don't worry. Um, I've just turned on my UV light here just to emphasize kind of the OBA content here. Now, I hope you can see on camera, I'm not too sure. I will put some close-ups on here though, just to, just to make sure you can be able to see this. But I can definitely see it sat here that the left-hand picture on this side here is the Platinum Brighter, and it is a lot duller. It's almost a purple in tone compared to the Platinum Matte at the back here, which is a lot lighter and I'm almost in giving that blue, it's projecting that light blue back at me. And to be honest, it's not far off white to be fair, but the Platinum Brighter is definitely darker and it has definitely got a different tone to it as well. Now, this is the OBAs at work. So the Platinum Mat has OBAs in, so that's reflecting a lot more of them back in a kind of a blue spectrum for us. And then the brighter here isn't projecting um, any kind of those, those spectrums back to us. So it appears a lot darker and like I said, a little bit purple to be honest. So that's kind of OBAs in action, should we say. So I kind of showed you what OBAs are, talked a little bit about how they work and also the pros and cons to kind of using them. So the last question I think that we need to answer is should we be using them and should we be looking for papers with OBAs or without OBAs? So the simple answer to this is yes, but it's also no. Now, there are a lot of problems by using OBAs. So if you're looking for that fine art print that is gonna last for hundreds of years, the answer would be no, do not use OBAs in your prints because over that period of time, there is gonna be a change in how your print looks. A big plus point to OBAs, like I said before, is the higher white point gives us a closer kind of match to our screen. Um, because our screens tend to have a little bit more blue in there, so they appear a bit brighter and a bit more punchier. Now, it kind of comes back to managing expectation as well. If a print comes out on kind of a warmer paper, like our a natural soft textured, say, compared to our, our natural soft textured bright white, then you may see a lot more color change and a little bit more shift in there in colors. So it might just change that orange to a little bit more of a red and things like that or vice versa. Now we do offer a handful of papers that don't have any OBAs in. Now the big two, should we say, are our Legacy Gloss, which is our Fine Art Glossy, kind of quite a high gloss, unglazed kind of feel to it. Feels a lot like a darkroom paper, almost like a warm tone darkroom paper, to be honest. Now, kind of the brother or sister, should I say to that, is the Platinum Cotton. Now this is a matte paper, again, with no OBAs, a very smooth matte paper. It's like our smooth cotton, but it just hasn't got any OBAs into it, so it had this warmer feel to it. The other paper we do is our Natural Soft Textured. Now, this is the OBA-free version of our Natural Soft Textured Bright White. Now, Natural Soft Textured Bright White is a paper I recommend all the time because it's a fabulous paper, 100% um, cotton, really high white points, so really nice and easy to print on. Now, the Natural Soft Textured is a great version to this, absolutely fantastic and contains no OBAs in there. Now, if you're looking for a textured paper, but with no OBAs, then the Natural Textured would be your paper of choice. We also offer the Natural Textured Bright White that has kind of a high OBA content and also the Cotton Etching, which has kind of what they call a moderate OBA content. So these two papers are OBA papers, so they have a lot higher white point than when compared to the natural textured. Again, fantastic paper. Now it gives a really nice feel, kind of that watercolor, kind of cartridge kind of paper feel. Now the last paper, as I talked about earlier, is the Platinum Brighter. Now this is an OBA free paper. It doesn't contain OBAs, but it does contain Brighter, a bromose sulfate. So it is giving those punchy colors and it is giving that kind of deep black and richness to your prints as well. 
Now, as always, I hope that's been useful. I hope you have a better understanding of what OBAs are. I'm sorry I can't really give you a definitive answer if you should use them or not. Um, like I said, it's kind of a yes and a no. Um, so it's everyone's kind of got their own personal preference, I believe. So have a look, have a test of them and see which you prefer. But just bear in mind, if you do use the OBA papers, then there will be a slight kind of fall off over the decades of your prints. We're not talking days or weeks or years. We are talking decades that this will take to kind of come into action, should we say. So I promised you at the start of the video um, a voucher code, as always. So the voucher code is FSYouTube15, and that will give you 15% off photospeed.com. Also, for all you US viewers out there, don't forget Photospeed offer $9 shipping to the US. You will be liable to any taxes and um, import duty and things like that. I would have to say that. So well worth, if you wanted to get any of our papers shipped over to you, that's absolutely fine. And we can do that for you. So hope that's been useful and I will see you next week. Bye bye.